Hey, Shane here. Whenever we talk about how carbohydrates can be good for building muscle, we get comments from people who are worried that if they eat too many carbs, their bodies will produce too much insulin and they'll become desensitized to it, leading to insulin resistance. Can that happen? The first thing I did was reach out to an endocrinologist who specializes in diseases like diabetes. Then I spoke with a prominent nutritionist to get their take on it. My question was very specific. Should skinny guys be worried about eating too many carbs while bulking? Could that lead to insulin resistance? The answers I got kind of surprised me. Let's dive into it. Let's start with the basics. When you eat carbohydrates, you break them down into simple sugars, which are released into your bloodstream. When your pancreas detects those rising blood sugar levels, it secretes insulin, which helps that sugar enter your cells, where you can use it for energy or store it as glycogen. When your blood sugar drops back down to normal, your pancreas stops producing insulin and everything is back at baseline. That's how it's supposed to work. When someone has insulin resistance, then their insulin stops working as efficiently, forcing them to produce more of it to get the job done. And the ominous thing is, if it continues getting worse for long enough, usually around 10 years, then it can lead to type 2 diabetes. The question is, what causes that insulin resistance? The two main drivers seem to be inactivity and excess body fat, both of which can cause fat to accumulate in the pancreas and liver, leading to a loss of function and thus interfering with insulin production and signaling. That's where low-carb diets come in. When you aren't eating as many carbs, you won't be releasing as much sugar into your blood, and so your pancreas won't need to secrete as much insulin. Here's the thing. Imagine you have a broken leg. If you walk on that broken leg, it can make the injury worse, so it totally makes sense to avoid walking on it. But if you don't have a broken leg, then you don't need to avoid walking on it. In fact, that could do more harm than good. You'd miss out on all the health benefits of walking. Carbs aren't so different. Unless you already have insulin resistance, then there's no reason to avoid them. You can take advantage of all the amazing health benefits of fruits, vegetables, whole grains, and legumes. And you can pump your muscles full of glycogen, making them look fuller and harder and improving your performance in the gym. Even if you do have insulin resistance, the only known way to reverse it is to attack the root of the problem, to get rid of the extra fat in your pancreas and liver. To do that, you can use a combination of a calorie deficit, resistance training, and maybe some other forms of exercise. The calorie deficit will help you lose fat. The resistance training will increase insulin sensitivity and encourage muscle growth, allowing you to burn pure fat. And people who do more exercise also tend to have proportionally less fat in their organs, even at the same overall body fat percentage. Once you get the fat out of your organs, your pancreas and liver will be able to function properly again and the insulin resistance will be gone. Or at least that's what I thought. Then I spoke with the actual experts. The first expert I spoke with was Dr. Carl Nadolsky, an endocrinologist who specializes in diseases like diabetes. He's also a fan of hypertrophy training, he knows what bulking is, and he knows how all of these pieces fit together. He confirmed that eating carbs doesn't cause insulin resistance. The twin problems are physical inactivity and high body fat levels. But he also pointed out that age and genetics can be significant factors too. So if someone is in their 70s, they're skinny fat, and diabetes runs in their families, they might want to focus more on eating a nutritious diet and lifting weights and doing plenty of exercise, less on bulking up and intentionally gaining weight. For the rest of us, we're at a very low risk to begin with, and lifting weights and building muscle will only drop that risk even further. Bulking can be super healthy for us. Next, I spoke with a nutritionist, Danny Lennon, a member on the advisory board for the Sports Nutrition Association. I knew about him because he also hosts the Sigma Nutrition Podcast, which is widely regarded as being the best nutrition podcast for general health information. Danny told me that eating carbohydrates while bulking up isn't a problem, that lifting weights reduces our risk even further, and that building muscle will help even more. But, like Dr. Nadolsky, he also mentioned that different diets are better than others, and he was more specific, too. He told me that consuming too much saturated fat can cause extra fat storage in our organs, which can then contribute to insulin resistance, even when calorie intake is matched. For example, in this study, the group given extra saturated fat increased their liver fat by 7%, whereas the group given extra polyunsaturated fat decreased their liver fat by 9%. On the bright side, there are also foods that seem to help, in particular, soluble fiber. They combine to the saturated fat in your blood and carry it through your digestive system, improving your blood lipids. That's the type of fiber found in foods like oats, peas, beans, apples, citrus fruits, and carrots. You'll notice that these are carbs, and they're part of a healthy diet that helps prevent both insulin resistance and heart disease. But there's also the devil carb, processed sugar. Excessive consumption of processed sugar is also associated with health conditions like insulin resistance, but the mechanism is a little bit different. 
Sugary foods and sodas taste good and aren't very filling, so people who eat more sugar tend to eat more food and gain more weight. And if they're sedentary, more of that weight gain is stored as fat, and more of that fat winds up in their organs. But in our case, as skinny guys, we're lifting weights, we're building muscle, and we're reducing all of these risk factors even lower. Consuming sugar isn't necessarily a problem, especially if it's part of a healthy diet and especially if we eat it in moderation. Most guidelines recommend keeping it to under around 10% of our total calorie intake. According to the National Institutes of Health, your risk only really starts to go up when your waist circumference creeps past around 40 inches as a man or 35 inches as a woman. And remember, most people are sedentary. Your risk will be even lower if you're lifting weights and building muscle. If you're still worried, we've been doing this for over 10 years, we've helped over 10,000 naturally skinny people bulk up. Most of them eat plenty of carbohydrates, and we've never heard of anybody running into a problem with insulin resistance. With that said, there's more than one way to unskinny a cat. If you'd rather bulk on a lower carb diet, that's totally fine. It will just be a little bit harder. All right, that's it for now. As always, I'd love to hear what you think down in the comments, and I hope to see you in the next one.